Hello, this is Patrick. You're watching Tesla Trip, and welcome to some more Tesla news. Really big stuff going on this week. Mainly, version nine of the firmware is rolling out. So by the time you get this show, there's probably a little icon on your dashboard if you own a Tesla saying that there's an update ready to be installed, and there's a new version of the app. So it's it's like it's crazy exciting. I, I can't I can't contain myself. Um, <laughs> Yeah, people are already starting to get it, and there's all kinds of videos popping up on on what's new in version nine of the firmware. And this is this is for all Teslas, Model S, three X. I guess everything except for the Roadster. So what are the what are the new things that you get? You get the Atari Easter egg games. So there's Centipede and Missile Command for sure that's shown off in the videos that people have been posting online. There's kind of unique touchscreen controls. On Teslas with hardware version 2.5, there's the dash cam. It's just in beta right now, so what you have to do is you have to take a USB stick, you have to format it, and you have to put a folder in there, and you have to name it Tesla Cam. And then you're able to, it, and it has to be formatted as FAT32, <laughs> and it does take up one of your USB ports. And this will work on all Model 3s and any Model S's and X's made with the 2.5 hardware which means people like me which have the 2.0 hardware it won't work with this version maybe in the future versions or maybe when we get the hardware upgrade if we bought full self-driving which i did hopefully sometime next year when i get that hardware they'll allow the dash cam feature on my model uh, x uh, the model 3 it'll work so i have to test that out the camera that it uses is just um, one of the front cameras and it's in color and it doesn't look too bad it's actually a pretty good quality dash cam but it, if you really want a dash cam you're probably still better off buying a third party one so you can have a lot more features where it's on all the time and it can um, you can access it with your phone and a lot more features and up to 4k video and that sort of stuff where you have a forward and backwards cam uh, so, the, so so on all the Teslas <laughs> the really big stuff is the autopilot updates so it's back to being able to recognize trucks, it can recognize motorcycles, people are saying you can recognize cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, you can see how it's zoomed out a little bit more and the drive on nav feature where it has like a line, it almost looks like Guitar Hero or a Rock Band or something where you've got all these cars and lines and you can see it uh, routing the path. I can't wait to try this out as the, the time recording this on Sunday night. I don't have it yet. Hopefully I'll have it in the morning. I'll make another video. Uh, I don't live in a big city though, so I can't, I can't use freeway stuff for the drive on nav until I make it to a big city, which I am going to be doing next weekend. I'll be in Denver. Uh, they say, our newest autopilot convenience feature designed to get you to your destination more effectively by guiding your car on and off the highway. Navigate on autopilot intelligi intelligently Suggest lane changes to keep you on your route in addition to making adjustments so you don't get stuck behind slow cars or trucks. When Navigate on Autopilot is active, a single blue line indicates the path ahead, keeping your car in the lane. Gray lines highlight lane changes for a more effective driving route. Navigate on Autopilot will also automatically steer towards and take correct highway lane interchanges and exits based on your destination. So basically this is the on-ramp to off-ramp feature that Elon's been talking about where on the freeway it will make, it, it actually if you turn off the suggestions it'll just automatically um, take over and pass slow cars and take exits when you need to to get to your destination which is just amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to try it hopefully uh, next weekend. They also have new blind spot warning obstacle aware acceleration so uh, when you're going slow it can detect if there's something in front of you and it won't allow you to accelerate quickly into it which is pretty cool um, there's been you know a few cases like in all car brands where people mistake the brake for the gas pedal because they're so close together or whatever the reason there's panicking because of some situation and they hit the gas or the accelerator by mistake this would limit how quickly the vehicle accelerates so you hopefully realize, oh, I'm obviously hitting the wrong thing. So oh, that would save a lot of little accidents that people have been having where they accidentally crash into buildings 
It's, it's pretty cool that the technology is there to enable this to happen. Model 3, big updates across the board. It's finally catching up with the S and X. It has uh, the calendar functionality so that you can um, just pull it up and click on your destinations and it'll navigate you to it. The application launcher, everything's kind of grouped in there now, so that gives you an energy app so you can monitor your energy usage when you're trying to do some hypermiling. It's got the web browser, uh, rear view camera, the phone, and charging apps are all kind of bundled into there. Uh, navigation's been moved to the left side, which makes a lot of sense because you're the driver and it's to your right hand on the left side of the screen. A lot easier to get to. Uh, climbing controls shows a little bit better visualization of where the climate's going. And there's some optimizations in the media section so you can, you can navigate directly to like 88.5. FM. It's been improved overall and mainly the UI on the Model S and X looks like the Model 3. I'll go into more detail when I get this update so I can show you guys hands-on what's going on. Tesla also updated the mobile app to match all the new features in version 9. Some really big things that have been, you know, promised for a long time have finally happened. The ability for third-party map app navigation sharing. So that means if you're on Google Maps you can you know, pick a destination and send it to your car and you don't have to manually, you know, enter it in. Which is something I've been able to do with the Chevy Volt for years when you had OnStar, but it was slow, very, very slow. You can remotely initiate vehicle firmware updates, so it can say, hey, you got a new update on your car, and you can be like, update it, which is awesome. Because if you're like, you know, in your house, you don't have to go out to your car and go press it. Or, you know, if you're on a trip and the car's at an airport or something, <laughs> you can do it remotely and have it update, which is really cool and then media controls for passengers so people in the back seat could uh, you know take over and skip songs or whatever which is going to be super handy good news on the gigafactory over in nevada they're ahead of schedule and they're actually producing more batteries than they originally intended to by this point in time which means it's no longer a bottleneck on the model threes it's not holding anything up and that they're actually going to be increasing production to this insane amount like uh it's going to be 150 gigawatts of battery packs, which is, I don't, I don't even know how to imagine how that is um, annual production, but they're saying that it's already exceeded um, what they had planned on. And it's, it's I'm trying to make heads or tails of it. I have a link of the, to the article in the show notes if you want to read it from Electric. And I, there's the, a lot of numbers, and it was going to be a certain number, and they've already passed that number, and they're going to be adding even more capacity, which is phenomenal because we need more batteries to support the power walls like I've had a power on order for years and I haven't got it yet and I know the you know which those semis and trucks that are coming up in Model Y we, we need we need batteries uh, also good news in California they're looking at up, upping their uh, tax credit for the state because the federal tax credit is going to be lower on Tesla's because they've reached the 200,000 production mark. So next year, it won't be as much. I think it's going to drop to 5,000 instead of 7,500. Currently in California, it's $2,500 state credit, and they're looking at upping it to 4,500, which is similar to what Colorado does, which is 5,000. 5, so that would be a really welcome change and helping with the adoption of electric vehicles. And, you know, it, it'll, it'll help that Model 3 base price go below 25 thousand almost no almost 20, 26 something like that <laughs> it would be it would be pretty doggone good um, when they start shipping the standard range tesla model 3 next year thank you guys for watching please subscribe if you hadn't and click the little notification bell so you can see when these videos come out i try and kick them out about once a week sometimes more if there's some interesting news oh yeah don't don't worry tesla is doing great i know there was a lot of um, controversy over Elon's tweets and now that looks like there's a 40 million dollar fine 20 for Elon and 24 Tesla but Elon still gets to be the CEO he's not the chairman of the board anymore but they're on the right path the deliveries of the Model 3 and well just all Teslas in general this weekend are record-breaking I hear stories coming out of Denver of over 20 truckloads a day and just um, they were saying like two or 200 deliveries just yesterday and yeah I, I i saw a tesla model 3 driving through my town that i didn't know about <laughs> just yesterday so they're everywhere and 
I think the future looks really bright for electric cars in general, especially Tesla. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to chat at me, I'm on Twitter at Walking Crow, or you can email me. I'm Pat.Lawson at Wild West EV. And we'll see you guys later. Thanks so much. Bye.